What's up everyone, welcome back to Just Finish Coding. This is part 4 of our scrolling platformer game series on Scratch 3. So let's get coding. Just finished coding. Now quick interjection here, if you've not watched parts 1 to 3, please watch them before you come here because we're picking up from where we left off and you'll be very lost. I'll leave a card for you right here. Please watch the videos and then come right back. If you're still here, I'm going to assume that you've watched parts 1 to 3, in which case your platformer should look something like mine. And while you have wall jumping, scrolling on both the axes and all that stuff enabled, the obstacle course is still not set up. So in this video, what we'll be doing is to set up our entire obstacle course and make sure that our player can move about it peacefully. Let's get right into it. I'm not going to make any changes in the platformer sprite just as yet. So instead, I'm going to head over to the obstacle sprite and within the initialize message, I need to add a lot of things. So first of all, I'm going to remove that show right there and instead add in a hide. We'll do the showing a little bit later. So after you are hiding this, it's important to know that the obstacle has a bunch of costumes, which we haven't loaded yet. So now I'm going to head over to the costumes and then within choose a costume, click upload a costume. Now, if you haven't downloaded all the files which are linked in the description below uh, as a Google Drive attachment, then please go ahead and do so. All the scratch files of every single video plus all the art that I'm going to be using will be linked right there. So once you've downloaded it, now you can click on upload costume and then you can upload all your sprites. There are eight of them in total and I'm going to open all of them at once. Now, uh, I'm going to delete this first sprite because I don't really think I need it. And the rest of them should be centered automatically. So um, let's proceed. Now, once you've um, done that, now you can uh, remove this uh, set Y pause too, and you can duplicate this once. And now you can set the X position as well. So as far as the X and Y position for the first block, I believe it is negative 20 and negative uh, 240 as the Y position. And that reminds me to also set up the initial position for the player, which uh, I think we set as 0, 0, but we will change it right now. So the X position is going to be um, negative 100 and negative 50. That's going to be the X position and Y position. Now let's uh, head back to the obstacle. Okay. So now once you're done with these two things, now you can put these two things in here. And now you need to know which costume you want among them. So what I'm going to do for this um, obstacle is I'm going to have seven clones and the one sprite costume itself. So the sprite costume is going to be the first one. So I'm going to be showing it like right when the game starts. Uh, but as far as the other ones are concerned, I'm going to like delete all of them at the beginning. So delete all clones. And um, that is pretty much going to be how I'm going to work out. So it's important to set the first costume right here. So what I'm going to do is say switch costume to and say one. And that is pretty much all you need here. Now this code would work out, but you could optionally add in this so that your game works faster. And uh, you just make sure like you put in the same X and Y positions. Okay. So X will be negative 20 and Y would be negative 240. And that is pretty much it. Now that obviously makes sense because initially scroll X and scroll Y are going to be zero. So uh, we are just going to go to X position, Y position and oops, not negative 24, negative 240. Since the X and uh, Y position are just going to be the coordinates we go to, we will be going to this coordinate right here. All right, so once you're done with the uh, um, initialize message, now you can get into coding a little bit of the play game message. Uh, and you probably realize that I didn't do anything there, so we are starting right now. So when I receive play game, and I'm actually gonna zoom in so that you guys can see better. So let's get this as down as possible. So when we do receive play game, here is where we have all the clones. So what I'm gonna do is head over to variables and then make a new variable for this sprite only. And this is gonna be called clone number. So this is going to keep track of which clone has which costume. Okay, so you can click OK. And after this, you can set clone number right here, not like three or four or zero, but instead two. And the reason we're doing two is because clone numbers are going to correspond to the costume. And um, since we're using the costume one for this sprite already, uh, we can start with two right away. I'm going to hide the clone number variable. Okay, so now I'm going to head over to control and grab a repeat number of times and I'm going to repeat seven times because like I mentioned, there are seven clones and there is one like main sprite costume. Okay, so repeat seven. Within that, what I'm going to do is to create a clone of myself. And after this, our clone number shouldn't always be two since we want each of these clones to have a different costume. 
what I will instead do is to say change clone number by one. And that is pretty much all you need within your play game. Now, alternate, um, if you really want to, you can add in a show right here. And I'm going to do it for the obstacle. Uh, but for the other sprites, this isn't necessary because, uh, for example, if your coordinates are out of this um, screen, for example, let's just say, you know, your X position and Y position are 1000 and 1000, just hypothetically, then we wouldn't want to show because it would just, you know, show and flicker for a second and then hide. But since this is going to be there at the start of the game, uh, let's just show it. All right, so once you're done with this, now we need to start with the when I um, when I like start as a clone script. So I'm gonna head over to control and head grab this block which says when I start as a clone. And after this, here's what you need to do. First add in a height from the look section and this is because we don't want all the clones to be showing up right at the beginning and flickering. And the same reason I decided to add in a show right here. In case you know the clones aren't supposed to be in the starting of the game, then I'm gonna make sure that they are hidden because if they show themselves, they're gonna flicker and then hide and I don't really want that to happen. So after you hide, it is important to switch the costume to the correct costume and the correct costume in this case, and I'm just uh, finding the block, yep, there we go. And the correct costume will be the clone number. So after we're done with this, now we're just gonna have a whole bunch of if else's to decide the particular costume. And within each of the if else's, uh, we will be having, you know, set X pause to something and set Y pause to something else. And uh, to make this easier, what you can do is to make your own block. So I'm gonna click make a block and I'm, I'm gonna say go to uh, X comma Y, okay? And uh, I'm gonna add in two inputs, X and Y. All right, so um, I think you can run without screen refresh. I don't think that would be a problem right here. And uh, after this, you can just say uh, within define, set X pause to X and set Y pause to Y. And this is going to ensure that we can just enter in the two numbers rather than grabbing these two um, blocks of code all the time. So set X pause to X and set Y pause to Y. And that is pretty much it. So now what I'm gonna do is to put in a whole bunch of if else's and uh, I really don't wanna explain stuff because there isn't anything to explain and I'll just be wasting your time. So what I'll do is head back right when my code is finished and then I'll pause for a moment so that you guys can like take down all the coordinates if you wanna make the same obstacle course. All right, so I just finished putting together my scripts and you can actually copy them if you want and I'll hold on the screen right here. So basically what I've had is, you know, check the clone number for the costume and then basically if the clone number is this, then go to this X position and Y position and that is just a whole bunch of if else's. I'm gonna scroll down below right now so that you guys can see the rest. And uh, this delete, this clone is optional guys because we're really not gonna have any other clone number. And what you can instead do is just change this if to an if else. Uh, I just added it and that isn't really gonna make a difference. So I'm gonna leave it right here. Now this code alone will not work out because we have hidden all the clones and uh, right here you can see we don't have a show justice yet. So what you can do is to grab a, a make a new block actually. And you can call this block go to coordinates, okay? And uh, what I'm gonna have in this block is I'm gonna have two inputs, an X position and a Y position. And uh, I'm gonna run without screen refresh, okay? So now you can click okay. And uh, right here, when you're defining this block, you can go and put this, you know, right here, but keep uh, these two parameters as, um, don't put them inside the X and Y positions. Instead, uh, put in those two, like parameters from the block itself right in there. Now what we can do is call the function here and put in these two blocks of code. And as of now, there's no differences or uh, just as yet, these things are gonna work out the same way. But after this, we'll add in an if else, okay? And what we're gonna say is if, and now head, head over to operators, grab an and, as well as two equal to's. And what we're gonna do within these equal to is, we're gonna say if x is equal to the X position of the block, okay? And uh, I'll, I'll explain why we're doing this in a second. So just uh, hold on. So if X equal to the X position and Y is equal to the Y position, in this case, we will be showing. Um, but if this is not the case, then we will hide, okay? And uh, the reason we're doing is sometimes, um, actually, I'll show it to you without having this in place. Um, but uh, okay, let's just have this one block of code. So we will have one costume right here and okay, we aren't even scrolling down. Never mind. I'll just add this in. What the problem is, if is if you're scrolling, okay, to the right or to the left, then what's gonna happen is the entire 
um, block is going to be seen even after it is it has moved out of the stage and that isn't really a good thing because the player is going to think the block is there while it's actually really really far away and the reason is scratch shows all the sprites and only moves them to a maximum uh, only moves them to like the maximum screen position where the tiniest pixel is shown even if they're not supposed to be in the screen at all so uh, that's the reason just make sure you have this in place and you can call the function right here okay so now i'm going to test out the program i'm going to click ok and as you can see we didn't really have any real output so i'm not entirely sure what the reason for this is so i will check my code and then be right back okay so i just spent a while debugging this and the error turned out to be something so silly and so stupid and that's because i called in the wrong function right here and we need to say go to coordinates and not go to x and y that's just for like starting the program all right so now when we start the program now you can see when we move about you can see that we have our entire level and we can wall jump we can do a lot of stuff and i'm actually going to play through a little bit to make sure everything is there and uh, boom and as you can see we can go up the slope and we can fall down pretty fast as well and uh, we finally have the trampoline somewhere here before we get into the end uh, like the last platform before you know the game ends and uh, what i'm going to do additionally in the platformer is to make sure that we have the initial position set up so what I'm going to do is scroll up to where we had initialize and uh, I'm going to say go to and I don't entirely remember the coordinates that we had. It was one I believe was negative 100 and the other was negative 50. Um, yeah, X is negative 100 and Y is negative 50. Basically the same thing that we did for the obstacle. So I'm going to have this in place and uh, after this you might have noticed that um, even though right certain things aren't uh, obviously we don't we have the scrolling set up. Uh, even though like the ground should be right at the bottom, it does come up and that's because the, that's the way we've coded the scrolling uh, mechanism of the game. But what it would be nice to do is to make sure that the ground is right at the bottom fixed, but as we go up, it starts to vary. So what we need is basically like a kind of, you know, stopper. So if we have the, um, if we have the scroll X and scroll Y more than a certain amount, or less than a certain amount, then we will stop the scrolling altogether. So that's what we'll be doing right now. So scroll down below to where you have your main play game um, message. And right here you can see we set scroll X to the X position and scroll Y to the Y position. And uh, here's where we can add in like a stopper, okay? So now head over to control and grab an if then. And you wanna put one uh, set above the if then and the other one below and follow that up with another if then, okay? So now the uh, condition we're going to have on top is going to be if, okay, if the scroll X is greater than nine, that is like the stopper that I'm going to be using. And uh, as far as scroll Y is concerned, I'm going to be using if scroll Y is less than, not great. I'm not sure if I said greater than, I meant less than. Um, and if scroll Y is less than uh, negative 80, then we will not be scrolling, okay. Uh, we, uh, you might initially be tempted to say set scroll X and scroll Y to be 0, 0. But keep in mind that this scroll X and scroll Y is initially 9. So if we set it back to 0, we're going to have some chaotic movement in the game. So what we need to do is make sure we set it back to this number, which we're doing right here. So I'm going to set scroll X to be 9. And I'm going to set scroll Y to be negative 80. So set scroll Y to negative 80. Now you can throw in all these lines of code right here and put them within that uh, forever loop. And uh, if you're still wondering why we had this entire go to coordinates function, because you might think that uh, scroll X, I'll just scroll down, just hold on a sec. Yep, you might think that X position would always be equal to scroll X, at least here when we're just setting X position to be scroll X and I mean scroll X to be the X position and scroll Y to be the Y position, like why would we even have this code? And yep, the reason for that is because of this. So we are like stopping the scrolling after a certain point. And if we're not doing that, then you can probably just add go to whatever your initial position was. But since we're doing that, it's important we have this in place. So now I'm going to test my code. And now you can see we have our course set up. Our game scrolls only when we need it to. And that is pretty cool. And that is all you'll be coding in this video. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a like. And also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.